Well, here we are again, folks. How's everybody doing? Uh, this is an old Triang Lord of the Isles single wheeler uh, in Great Western livery. Uh, sent to me by a chap called Bernard, and he said that he got this for his 65th birthday from his son, um, but it hasn't run in eight years. It's uh, a non runner at the moment. So let's just turn on the power. Nothing happens. Not a sausage. So we'll get into the shed. I'm off to the bench and see what's going on. Just gonna to have to shove this one in. Okie dokie then. So this is gonna be very similar to uh, my Caledonian single wheeler, but I think there are differences. Let's just take the tender off just now, get a look at this. Uh, so this has got a very different front bogey to the Caledonian one. It's got plastic wheels, so there's no scope there for getting extra pickups. Um, and the underplate here is broken at the corner there. I, ooh, what's going on there? The uh, hook on the drawbar. It's like it's been, uh, it's almost cut through. It's like it's been pinched with something. Yeah, and it's a bit loose as well. But other than that, this looks uh, very nice. The Lord of the Isles. Yeah, really nice locomotive. I believe this is a, it's called a, a Dean's single or an Achilles class. Not sure, but uh, yeah, very nice locomotive. But you know, it's going to have the same issues as the Caledonian single. It's going to be a bit uh, front heavy, um, and only picking up from these four wheels means it'll be a bit stoppy starty. Um, plastic wheels on the tender. On my Caledonian single, um, I'll just show you actually. Uh, my Caledonian single here, I fitted uh, new wheels onto the tender, metal ones, and. Uh, Put some guitar string pickups in, hardwired it to the motor, and uh, so it's now picking up from all those wheels. So it has no problem going over points and crossings and stuff. And uh, yeah, it made a big difference to it. But the remit with this is just to get this going again. We're not going to be fitting any extra pickups. Let's just get this working as intended. Okay, okay. Screwdriver. Screw in the rear as usual. And out it comes, that lifts off. Oh, <laughs> well, I see why it's not running. So this red wire should be connected to this brush. Um, yeah, it's got an insulator there, but that red wire should be connecting to this brush here. And this brush will just connect to the, the chassis uh, uh, via the clip. So at the moment, this is uh, shorting. That's why it's not running. I bet if we put a battery over the top there, it'll go. Let's just try that. Yep, it appears to be fitted with uh, brand new brushes. Um, so we'll get the motor out, we'll clean it up, we'll lubricate it, we'll remagnetize it, and this will be fine. That spring, take that off from there. Just use my little brass screwdriver to undo the screw, and that should lift out. Yeah, the commutator needs a really good clean, the slots are all gunked up. Worm gear's a bit dirty. Take this plate off though. Oh, see, it's been over tightened, that's why it's cracked. That out the road, and then we can lift these wheels out. That's one of the good things about this model. Very good access to the wheels. They just lift out along with the traction magnet. Uh, my Caledonian one, um, I took the traction magnet out and replaced it with lead. Get a bit more weight in there and stop the wheels getting pulled from one side to the other. Um, but I don't know what track Bernard uses. He's maybe still using old old tracks, so. We'll leave the traction magnet in, but that's uh, all oily and gunky, so we'll clean them out. Get the bits and bobs into the tub. Right, we'll squish that out first. Quite a lot of old gunky grease in there. We'll give the wheels a good squish.
to get the Mackey brush into here. All the crap out between the teeth of the gear. Okay, we'll give these wheels a good clean. Um, I think I'll get the rotary tool onto them because I want these to be as clean as possible. Okay, so those ones clean. Cleaning the inside of the wheels as well because that's where the pickup makes contact. Right, pop the wheels back in. I uh, want to make sure we've got them the right way around. So the pickup's on this side, so we want the uh, insulated wheels to be on the same side as the pickup. That way around. And we'll get some fresh oil in. And we can pop this back on. Get the pickup in place. Right, you fit the drawbar. Screw it in there. Okie dokie, that'll do for that I think. Alright, motor. Let's take this out. This motor has a copper shield in front of the magnet, which is a good idea because the, uh, you know, the end of the armature pushes against it, so it's um, rubbing on the copper shield rather than onto the magnet. And then this will lift out. That will lift out, or it should do. Oh, it's stuck. This bearing plate here is really jammed in. Um, I could force it out, but I think I'm just going to leave it. I don't want to risk any breakages because these motors are not easy to come by. So we'll just get a pipe cleaner in here. Clean out some of that. And we'll clean the commutator in situ. Uh, what am I looking for? Teacup, that's what I'm looking for. It's cleaned up nicely. Give that a squish. Okay, we'll let that contact cleaner evaporate off. So we'll look at the brushes. Um, yeah, they're a bit dirty. They're in good condition. They almost look new, actually. Don't look worn at all. But they are very dirty. Yeah, I think we'll just give these a wee blast with the rotary tool. Okay, I think we can start getting this back together. Everything seems okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, that bogey is really stiff. Yeah, I'm not convinced that's the right screw that that's been held on with. Yeah, there's no shoulder on it. That's not the right screw. Hey, uh, the screws we've got, that's the one for that. That'll be the one for that. That's got a shoulder on it. I think somebody got their screws mixed up. There you go, that's better. Right, okay, let's get this motor back together. That'll fit in there. And that goes on there. Okay, we'll go remagnetize this. Put this into the remagnetizer. Give it a blast. And that is that. Make sure that's screwed in nice and tight. There you go. Right, we'll get some uh, oil into the oil reserve at the back there. A bit of oil in the bearing directly. Same at the front. Front oil reserve is very dry. 
a wee bit of grease on the worm gear. Now we'll get the brushes in. Pop this back in, like so much easier done with a brass screwdriver. And screw that down. Not a full point taking that off actually. And then the insulating sleeve. So there. And then we want to tuck that down. To there. It's almost like fiddling in this in. There we go. Okie dokie. That should go with the battery now. Cool. Right, try it on the test track. There we go. We'll pop this back in there. Like that. There we are. Just pop this on the test track again. There we are. Done. Let's go and pull out the shed and give it a wee run around the layout. Okay, let's pull out a lot of dials. Uh, I've got a funny feeling it's going to be a bit stoppy starting and a bit stumbly, but let's see. So yeah, as I expected, it's uh, showing signs of being a bit front heavy and uh, it's a bit stoppy starty on the points. Um, you know, my Caledonian uh, single had exactly the same problem. Um, I think I'm going to have a look at this and see if I can get some weight into the tender and maybe put a bush on the hook on the drawbar and that might, uh, you know, if I can get the tender to hold the rear of the locomotive down, it might make uh, better contact with the track and balance it better. So I'll, I'll have a wee fiddle. Okay, these old trying single wheelers uh, have a bit of an inherent problem in that they're way too front heavy, so they tend to rock like that when they're going along. Um, and because they're only picking up from those four wheels, they'll have problems with uh, points and diamond crossings and things, especially if they're not absolutely, you know, perfectly level. This also has uh, the old trying wheels. Um, so, one thing I did try with, with my Caledonian one was to put some weight in the tender and put a little bush on the tow bar hook there on the locomotive. So when the tender was hooked on, it's kind of putting a little bit of downward force on the back of the tender. Now it sort of worked, but the problem I had with the Caledonian one, the traction was so bad, as soon as you added weight to the tender, it, <laughs> it wouldn't pull anything very well. Um, I think this might be slightly different. I think this might have slightly better traction because of these wheels. They're not the uh, shiny ones on my Caledonian one. So we'll see. Um, so I'm going to try that. Now the tenderness is a little bit different than the Caledonian one. There's no real room for any weight if you take the, the tender body off. But this bit comes off here and that exposes the screw. Um, but there's a nice void here. So we'll try getting some lead in there. I'll maybe take this lead up, stick it in with something, but let's just bung it in just now. So that fits in there nicely, just makes that a wee bit heavier. And then I've taken a little plastic field bush, um, filed it down a wee bit, and put it over the, the uh, hook on the drawbar there. So when that's hooked on, when it's on the track anyway, it's going to hold the rear end down. Um, it will mean that these wheels are lifting very, very slightly, 
but I think that will be okay. Let's go and give this a wee shot, see if it's any better. Okay, I'll try it again. Okay, so all things considered, I don't think that's running bad at all. Um, it's a wee bit stumbling at some points, but that's largely down to the older trying wheels. Um, but yeah, I think that's done the trick. Putting that bit of weight in the tender, putting the bush on the hook, it's just uh, stabilised that a little bit. Let's see what its traction is like though. Let's see if it'll pull three coaches, because my Caledonian one certainly wouldn't. Let's see what this does. Okay, so that's the lot of the aisles running again. Um, yeah, tricky wee things, these singles, to get to run well. Um, they're way too front heavy, there's not enough pickup, and they've got very poor traction. Um, all of which could be solved if they were tender driven. Um, I really, really wish Hornby, Bachman, or whoever would make a new version of both the Caledonian and this one. Uh, I'd pay serious money for a quiet, smooth running single. Uh, you know, put the motor in the tender, traction tyres in a couple of the wheels in the tender, um, leave the locomotive wheels for pickup only, and it would run really well. Um, you know, I think it'd be very interesting to see a, a modern tender drive using a wee coreless motor with a couple of worm gears. Um, I'm sure it would be possible to convert one though. Uh, so yeah, this had been wired up wrong, uh, which was causing a short. Uh, sorted that, cleaned it and oiled it and off she went. Um, adding that little bit of weight to the tender and fitting the, the bush on the drawbar does help it a lot. Um, but ideally, I think you know you really want to replace the tender wheels and fit pickups and hardwire it to the local. Uh, this definitely has a lot more traction than my Caledonian, which is interesting. Um, but you know those old trying wheels are a bit clumsy and stumbly, so it'll never run smoothly. But uh, it might actually run better on old steel track uh, with the magnesium kicking in. A uh, really nice model though. Um, you know I really like the big brass steam dome. Uh, makes it quite an eye-catching model, I think. Uh, so anyway, it runs, I'll get it packed up and sent back to Bernard. 
Um, thanks uh, very much for all the comments on my last video about the new layout plan. Uh, lots of suggestions and ideas, which is great, thanks. Um, I'll play around with ideas for a bit though, uh, but I'll keep you posted on how, how all that progresses. Okay folks, we'll catch you later.